Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in again for another weekly update on news and information about DCS World. I'm your host, of course, Perikli Hedgehog. And as always, I do hope this video finds you well wherever you are tuning in from. Well, a shorter newsletter from Eagle Dynamics this week, but nonetheless interesting and nonetheless worthy of some digestion. We're going to talk about the Viper. We're going to talk about the Mosquito, which I think is exceedingly close to release and largely confirmed in this week's newsletter. And also a little bit of a plug for a third party developer, Reflected Simulations and the Wolfpack campaign. So let's start with the Viper. Eagle Dynamics has indicated here that they've been able to accelerate the development process and progress of the Viper. And part of that was an improved damage model, which they believe is critical to that development process. So what they're saying here is that the new damage model provides better ballistics tracking and more detailed effects to sloped sheet metal. In the interim, and I haven't noticed this, but maybe you have, they have a more realistic representation of wing damage in the game right now. Now, I've been flying this aircraft in the Marianas recently, which I've enjoyed flying around and, and just basically enjoying the scenery and you know, looking at some of the features of the map, etc., etc., as well as testing out some improvements that I made to my rig. I was able to determine that um, there was, uh, I guess, a, a CPU suckage from uh, um, idling programs in the background. They were um, ghosting and using resources. So I was able to figure out which ones those were and shut them down, which has seen a little bit of a boost to performance with my CPU as made it against the graphics card. So hopefully some of my videos look a little less jerky, jerky now, so let me know, but uh, that's been a pain in the ass. Now, um, as I said, I haven't noticed the damage to the wings because I wasn't flying in combat theaters where I was going to get stitched up by various AAA or was going to receive blast damage from uh, um, ground attack or other aircraft for that matter. So again, let me know if you've noticed any of that damage. Now, some of you may be, may be saying, well, you know, this is just exterior stuff. What about all the internal things that the uh, team should be working on? The Viper hasn't, you know, we need to be making it further along. Now, notwithstanding the fact that WAGS has produced a few videos over the last few weeks indicating some changes and improvements to weapons and other bits and pieces for the Viper, uh, this exterior development is also a broader brush, if you like, to changes that are going to occur or are occurring to the jet genre of aircraft that we have in the game because the uh, damage model was uh, worked a lot on actually the P-47D that we talked about before. Uh, as part of the World War II birds. So some of this now is translating into these other aircraft and the F-16 happens to be one of those. Uh, of course, this damage model should, if I'm not mistaken, also have an influence on the systems within the aircraft. We're talking about, uh, you know, redundancies and uh, primary um, uh, functions in the aircraft, which could be the difference between you, you know, being able to land at a divert airfield uh, or bail out. So that's a significant piece of the puzzle in terms of operating aircraft in combat theaters. So it's not an insignificant or merely cosmetic. It's a little bit deeper than that. So unless I'm mistaken, let me know. But that's how I interpret the damage model in the game and it's good stuff. So again, um, Eagle Dynamics is not lying idle on this aircraft. I know some of you do express frustration with, with where it's at. But remember too, once that Hornet is out of early access effectively, uh, this is only going to benefit the resources available to the Viper team. And uh, this aircraft is making steady progress, I think, based on some of the things that we've seen over the last few weeks from WAGs, etc. Let's turn our attention to the Mosquito, which is very, very exciting. So it too is receiving some work on the exterior. And um, they have indicated that they're going to be uh, improving the external model, similar to the discussion we just had, and then they're going to add the final markings and weathering effects. So the screenshots that we should be looking at here are basically indicating that the aircraft is in the final stage in the assembly line. That's the quote, if you like, from Eagle Dynamics, which is a very significant one. Remember that earlier this year, the project sounded like it was all but scuppered, and that Nick Gray had not scuppered the project, but had essentially canned the exterior he wasn't happy with what they had done now the good news is this they managed to get their little hands on a uh, set of blueprints newly acquired blueprints they're saying 
and this has allowed them to um, get a lot more detail and with that detail and information in conjunction with improved 3D modeling techniques, this has meant that we're going to see a lot more uh, fine detail. Therefore, the smallest rivets, welds, and fabric seams are going to be visible on the exterior of the aircraft. So it's going to be a very, very accurate representation of this fantastic machine, which is good news for Mosquito fans. Now, at the early access stage, they're saying that uh, the aircraft is going to have different skins available to us, and it's also going to include those used in the famous Operation Jericho raid, which I referenced last week. I didn't mention the specific raid, but it's one of many that the Mosquito uh, conducted during World War II. And this was the reference to the Yamin's prison raid, which is one of the more famous raids that it conducted during the Second World War. Now, the remainder of the work for the aircraft and the team is going to be focused on finalizing the bulged bomb bay fairing and hydraulic bomb doors, the wing pylons and external fuel tanks. This is going to allow the Mosquito to carry two 500 bombs internally, with the fins cropped to fit, of course, uh, plus two other bombs under the wing, so a total of four there. So that's uh, good news. It's going to provide some interesting mission options for us and recreate, uh, as I said last week, some of the operations that the aircraft um, was involved in. And naturally, this is going to be Operation Jericho, because we know that they are also producing the Armin's prison as a model in the game, which is going to be destructible, which is fantastic stuff. All right, lastly here in the newsletter is the reference to, and basically a plug for Reflected Simulations' Wolfpack campaign, which I understand a few other YouTubers have gone through, done a walkthrough. I think uh, Tactical Pascal and also Lanky Pilot's done some work on this. So if you're interested in a little bit more information about how the campaign looks, that might be a good place to start. Otherwise, what we've got here is a reference to Zempka's Wolfpack, which uh, was the 56th fighter group and was one of the most famous fighting units in the U.S. Air Force during World War II, although it wasn't technically known as the U.S. Air Force at that time, I think. Anyway, flying the P-47D Thunderbolt throughout their time stationed in England, the group had more ace pilots and destroyed more enemy aircraft in air combat than any other groups. Pretty significant. Now, there's a large archive, I wasn't aware of this, of detailed pilot combat reports available online, which it seems that Reflected Simulations and Greg Gale who heads the company there, uh, had access to and he has endeavored to recreate these historical events in DCS world as they happen, which is cool. So that campaign is available in the eShop or it's on Steam. So again, something worth considering if you are interested in historical World War II flying on these fantastic machines or in these fantastic machines, which is cool stuff. So that wraps up the newsletter. I did want to, again, mention, of course, the fantastic news about True Grit and Heat Blur teaming up, and I won't go into a great deal of detail. There was some discussion in the forums about what tranche they were going to use, what, what variant of Eurofighter they were going to use, and I think it was Iron Mike who suggested there in the forums that it was going to be kind of more of an amalgamation of different aircraft, so don't expect one specific thing based on the information that they're allowed to use, what they have access to, and uh, how it's going to measure up. So they, they want to recreate as realistic a, an aircraft as possible, but they're not going to be restricted by the parameters of one particular aircraft because they may not be able to recreate that accurately, if that makes any sense. So they're going to Frankenstein's monster it a little bit, uh, which is a poor uh, analogy. But anyway, they're going to grab bits and pieces and produce a beautiful aircraft, not a monster, uh, that we will enjoy flying, that will be representative of the um, you know the family of aircraft that are currently flying, if you like, or have flown uh, this lethal you know air-to-air -air platform, which is capable, of course, doing air-to-ground as well. And in reference to that, it sounds like we are going to have more of an air-to-air -air fighter initially, and then as uh, the aircraft is released in, into early access and they continue to work on it, at a later stage we will get uh, air-to-ground rolls. Uh, available to us with weapon development and stuff like that too. So again, it's uh, this is a very complex aircraft, very sophisticated aircraft, so I'd imagine that it's going to be a while before we see it in game, 
um, expect that. But the main thing is, of course, the teaming up, which again, I think is worth celebrating, uh, is important news because the project is alive and well. And the extra boost that, uh, that True Grit, excuse me, gets now from the expertise that uh, Heapler, excuse me, can offer them is good stuff. Now, I also want to mention too that uh, the video was taken down for a while showcasing the aircraft. I don't know exactly what the issue was there. Uh, it was a minor one. I don't know if it was something as simple as the music or whatever it was. I don't know if that was changed. I didn't get to compare the two videos, but if you were able to pick out anything, let us know in the comments below. Overall, it doesn't matter. The, the thing's up and running again. Uh, it's good news. It was, uh, it was a pretty slick video, I must say, and of course, it's exciting news. All right, let's wrap up the newsletter. Thanks again, everybody, for liking and subscribing and commenting as usual. Have a great weekend, carry on flying. I'm gonna spend some time with my wife this weekend. It's her birthday, so Mrs. Prickly Hedgehog deserves some pampering. Uh, as I've been busy this week and flying and all the rest of it and trying to fly, uh, means I'm not always as attentive as I should be. As many of you as uh, husbands will know, with women and uh, our flight sims, these, that's our second wives. So, and sometimes that's not always popular. Anyway, you get the gist. So take care, take care of your loved ones, have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time. This is Prickly Hedgehog out. Cheers, guys.